Hi everyone, Sarah here. Just testing because I was messing with some settings. <laughs> so, so you're looking at the background sign and I'm not there right now, but I'm trying to check and see if, um, if you can hear me. So let me know if you can hear. Oh, you can hear me, good. Hi Robin, I'll be there in just a minute. Well, actually, let me make sure you can see me. Okay, Mom, can you see me? Yay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm trying to fix my my microphones from the other day when we had our blunder during the crafter's classroom. Um, so usually when I'm on that video intro screen, the black one, there is no volume, and I can't figure out on the settings how to get back to that. Um, so that's when my mom and I used to talk and make sure it was all hooked up on my phone and on the computer. and No ponytail, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, no ponytail. Oh, look it. I cut my hair. It was like down to here. So, so I, I didn't cut it. I got my hair cut So by a lot. Um, anyways, but then I didn't do much with it. I was running around moving chairs and... Um, then trying to figure out the sound. So anyways, here we are, Thursday night. Hang on, I'm trying to get on my phone to see if I can see myself. Um, and my mom's trying, did you find us, Mom? Yeah. On yours? Yep, okay. I got it. So you got it? Okay. So anyways. Oh, well, there I am. Well, I'm on the virtual page, so anyways, I can see me. Um, so... Welcome, Thursday night. Um, we are doing some Peerless tonight. And yeah, it's it's been a kind of chaotic day. So it's gonna just kind of be a go for it kind of night. Um, let's see, where, let's see. This week we shipped, if you signed up for, crafts for Crafters Classroom on September 10th, we shipped all the book kits for that, or at least most of them. So most of those went out today, just because we're kidding and everything for the warehouse sale that's coming up September 16th is in-person classes, September 17th is in-person shopping, and then virtual warehouse sale week is the 19th through the 23rd. So we're still working on stuff for that. Um, so let's see, let's go down to the table. Okay, down there you are. Down there I am. Okay, so let's see. Here is, oh, and I forgot something out in the shop. Uh oh So uh, hang on a second. I'm going to run out there and get it. So talk to my mom for a minute. <laughs> you know, she's a little stressed today because I had her helping my contractor move some furniture from her storeroom here at the shop to my house. And oh my gosh, but they got it done three more pieces done. I've almost all moved in and things are going swimmingly thanks to Sarah's help. Okay, so one of the classes is featuring Rubbernecker. Um, the other two cards that I have, there's four cards, but two of them are being kitted. So this is one of them. We're going to be doing different backgrounds and then um, silhouette stamping with these two stamps. So this stamp set actually comes in the kit um, and we'll be doing some brush blending on this one i did some watercoloring using their um, color fuse ink pads and i did it on a glass mat and spritzed it with water so we're going to do that now you don't have to have their color fuse if you have distress oxides you could pull those out um, you could pull out some re-inkers you're going to want to have a spray bottle. Um, I've been looking at some things and somebody actually mentioned this last time using salt um, and that gives a nice effect. So in the kit besides the four cards you're going to get some of the um, cold pressed watercolor, some of the white felt, so then you'll have and you'll have some extra card base colors. So then depending on what inks you have you don't necessarily have to have the exact inks that match um, the card colors because you're going to get some extra card bases and you're going to get some extra tops just so we can play around with making some different backgrounds. Um, so yeah, that's good. And we're going to play around with some of these tonight. Um, so that's going to be fun. 
And then let's see another card. I showed this one last week. This is in the um, interactive fun folds and interactive where we're doing this shutter card. Um, and then in the cards, 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 we're making this fall shaker card. So with the little leaves in it. So, and then last week, remember I was showing the stencil butters. Um, this one dried really nice. So, and then I didn't have two samples from last week. So two samples that I was, when I was showing the stencil butters last week, this is in the Impression Obsession um, holiday card class, holiday stencil cards or cards with stencils. Actually, this has got the kit, so ignore all the pieces that are falling out because this was like the sample card with the sample kit and I got to remember to put everything back but I just wanted to show you that because I didn't have the in-person last week. So this is in the Impression Obsession Holiday Stencil class. This one, and that's with the poinsettia and the tree. And in that class, you get these two stencils. Um, and this one was done with brush blending. And then I wanted to step out of my comfort zone, so I'm using stencil butters. So this one was done on the gold with the stencil butters. Now there are other, um, there are other like pastes and gels and stuff that will probably work too, but the stencil butters are available. These are the two that I used for this card. And then the other two that we're using in class are those two. So those are all available to order through Valley Stamp and Scrap. And I'm hoping Linda's on and she can um, do the link. Um, cause yeah, but yeah, you, you're going to have paper that you can brush blend all of them. Um, so you're going to have extra paper, extra tops that are this color so you can brush blend. But if you want to use the stencil butters and play with them, or if you have some other type of medium that will work, um, like through Art Anthology and there's other ones out there. Um, but these are available through Valley Stamp and Scrap. She got her supply in, so she's shipping them right away to you. Yeah. And Melinda Morning said she already got her notice, so she knows they're on the way. Yep, they're on the way. I talked to Linda. She said that she got them in. She's shipping them out. So you'll, you'll have some of that stuff even before you'll have your class kits because those will come closer to um, class time. We'll ship those either the 8th, 9th, or the 12th. So, But I think those are going to be fun cards. So let's go down or I'm down to you the table down. already. <laughs> See, so we're going to go. I told you she's frazzled oh tonight. <laughs> um, Peerless watercolors. I do like them. What they are is they are a sheet. And I can't remember how many are in here, and I'm not going to take the time to count. But we, did, we were out of stock for them for quite a while. So I do have a list of people that wanted them. And I'm going to get to that list. Um, and let you know that they're in stock or if you're watching me tonight and you just want to they're on the accessory page Which is under paper basics. I know I need to move that so under paper basics and there is an accessory square And then you'll find the peerless watercolors. It might be on the end of the page because I just added it and I forgot to move it to the top um, but, but what they are is this is a baked baked on color sheet so it's the color of the back and this is the baked down color. And then there's just a divider sheet in between each one and it's all these different colors. Now they all look the same, but like this one is flesh tint and it's this color. And sometimes they don't even look at what they are. This is a scarlet, so it's a scarlet. And like this one is a crimson, even though it looks green, it is actually crimson. So we're going to go through how to use the Peerless watercolors. Is this the only one of the Peerless options you have? That's the only Peerless option I have, yeah. So they do have some other ones, um, but this is the only one I have. Now they sent me some samples of these, and I've never used them before. And I did play with them a little bit this afternoon. But if anybody's used um, these liquid Peerless, let me know. They're okay. a little metallic -y too, so they're kind of fun. Are the stencil butters still available and are they on special? Sorry, the, she came in late. Oh, the stencil butters are available through Valley Stamp and Scrap. Yep. They are not on special. So we don't carry them. And I just kind of worked with Linda, who's our local store owner, and she carries them. So she, I went there and 
we worked a little bit together on um, figuring out what works and stuff and then she's carrying them and we're using them so like this one is violet so but it's the baked on color is usually much different so anyways how you use them and I'm not an expert by any means um, but I do like to play with them I really like to make backgrounds with them um, we'll do some resist with them but you're going to and let me just pull a piece of this is just a piece of cold pressed watercolor now the cold pressed watercolor is a hundred and forty pound um, stock it's very absorbent but the color stays on top so it moves around quite nicely and it can take as much water as you want to put on it um, but the cold press watercolor does not emboss very well. It's so absorbent that when you stamp it, like say with your Versamark, it soaks in before you can even get the powder on it and heat it. So it doesn't emboss very well. I like to do silhouettes on the top of this or do a background and put a die cut on it. The other one that I like to use is the 110 pound Royal Ultra White Felt. Now this one takes a lot of water. Um, once your color soaks in, you can move it around a little, but not as much, but it's not gonna pill. Like if you, we also have one more stock, which is our um, 100 pound smooth watercolor. If you work that a lot with a brush, it'll start to pill up. So those are the three stocks that we have. I should probably write that down so you can see it um, rather than just. So we have our cold press. And that's the 140 pound. And then we have the 110 pound Royal Ultra White Felt. Now we do have an 80 pound felt, so very different. And then we have our 100 pound smooth watercolor which the 100 pound smooth watercolor is more for um, lighter water application, so some stamping techniques. This is the one that you can take and you can put your ink pads on here, spritz it with some water, and pick up your color. You can do heavy brush blending on this and it's not gonna pill up. This one you can get a, quite a bit of water on with some brush blending. If you do brush it too much, you could start to get pilling. but. Let's just go to the basics of the Peerless. So I like to use a water brush, and if you just squeeze it, you'll get a drop coming off. I don't want to squeeze too hard, but I'm trying to show you. Oh, there. <laughs> it came right out. But anyways, you're going to pick the color up, and then you can put the color down. And you can get your color, and on the cold press, see how nicely that blends out? Um, and I can go back and see how it's still just pushing around on there, where if I put it on the Royal Ultra Felt, it, I, it moves around on there a good amount, but once it soaks in, like see how I have that line right there? So, on, but on the cold press, you can just keep, see how I can keep moving that around. And this is one where they talk about <laughs> where you can use a paper towel and you can lift up, like if, it, if you have too much color on there, you could take a paper towel and lift up some of that color. See how I just lifted that color up off of there? Where on the Royal Ultra Felt, it's soaked in, and I'm not gonna be able to do that. Now a little color came off, but see once it soaks into those fibers, you can't push it around. On the cold press, you can push that color around. It stays on top, but I don't know. I don't know how it works, but yeah. Um, so those, that's kind of the basics of the cold press now or of the peerless now another thing and let me get the swatch up here i like to do my cold my peerless on a um my glitter sheet my crystal diamond glitter hang on i'm just gonna clean off my green that i have on here and i'm gonna go to my blue I like my blue a lot and I like my purple a lot. Um, but you can just add the color onto here. 
and see how it pushes around really well on there. Let's see if I can get some deeper color. It's a deep blue. Even though this one's copper, that one is, see how that's deep blue? So you can blend those two colors together. And I can just make a background. Kind of, this glitter paper isn't as good for alcohol inks because it, I think it's just gets blotchy a little sometimes, but it works awesome for the Peerless. And I did die cut out a couple things, like some snowflakes. I'm really into snowflakes and blue this year. I don't know why. But yeah, it works really good for backgrounds. Do you have to buy a whole ream of paper, Sarah? Um, um, Merle Halpern's asking that question. Um, some of the, de depending on which paper it is, some of them come in 10 counts, depending on what it is. Like this crystal diamond print comes in <clears throat> a 10 count and then a 25 count. If you're talking about the cold press, that comes in, I believe, a 10 count also. And that one comes in a couple different sizes where I think you can get a layering swatch size, a five by seven size. Some of the more expensive papers will come in a 10 count eight and a half by 11 and a 25 count eight and a half by 11. This 100 pound smooth watercolor, I believe just comes in a 25. It doesn't come in a 10 count. So most of them come in a 10 or 25. Right? Well, most of the, they all come in a 25. Some of the more expensive ones come in a 10 count also. So I put quite a bit of water on here and it's going to dry. I'm just going to kind of leave it for a minute and then we'll, we'll go back to it. I don't know if I want it darker though, because I did cut out some stuff, some silver stuff, and I'm not sure what I'm going to use, but I might do it a little bit darker. So, but I'm just going to set that aside and let it dry because it's going to dry on its own or I can heat it to dry it. Um, but let's go on to some autumn colors just to get a whole variety of stuff that we can do with the Peerless. I did emboss this fall word set. Now this is our 80 pound natural felt. Um, this is the 100 pound watercolor. I've never used the 80 pound natural felt, but it was fall, so I kind of wanted a creamy color. So that's the one disadvantage to um, all the watercolors are white, but I wanted cream. So we're going to try it. I've never done it before, but let's give it a whirl. Um, let's go to my orange yellow. And this is a resist, so see how that, ooh. But yeah, it soaked in very fast, so you can't blend your colors together as much. Oops, I think ooh. I like that darker better. But I might put down this yellow first and then go over it with the darker. But yeah, I just embossed it in a clear um, I just embossed it with a clear embossing powder and that so that's a resist technique. Let's go up to scarlet though or orange yellow. Yeah, they they do last a long time, Emily. Let's go. This is flesh tint. This is a pink. Let's go to some scarlet because that's a nice fall color. You, you must be watching the virtual page. Huh? I am. Yeah. Okay. Because I couldn't find it on the regular page. <laughs> so yeah. Resist techniques. Now see, this is the 80 pound. And you can see that it's getting a little wrinkly. So I'm going to do the same thing on the 100 pound watercolor. Now sometimes I'll start out with a wash where I'll do, you can take, like if I wanted to do just a light yellow. Uh, 
Linda, okay. Linda's on. What did you ask Linda before, Sarah? I don't know. Oh, I asked her if she could link the stencil butters. I was hoping she could link the stencil butters. Okay. So to make a wash, like if you want it lighter than it comes out, you can just put a little bit on a block and add some more water, and that makes a very light wash. Okay, so if you want it lighter than it actually comes out, just put a little dab of it on a clear block, and then you can make a light wash. I don't really need it that light, but I just wanted to show you. But let's go and get some of our darker colors now. So this is the 100 pound watercolor now. Because on the 80 pound felt, it did wrinkle. So I just want to see on the 100 pound. Usually you can do like light watercolor techniques on the 100 pound. You can't soak it as much as you can as you can with the Royal Ultra White Felt or the Cold Press. So I need some gold. Oops. Don't want to dip my... So yeah, I'm going to use that for my words on a card. Can we get the paper and the watercolor through you, Sarah? Yes, the paper and the the um, peerless watercolors are on the it's on the paper basics, and then you click on accessories, and like I said, it might be the last item on there, just because I added it and I forgot to um, move it to the top of the page. I'm not sure where it's going to show up on the page. Scarlet. I'm running out of water here. Okay, so yeah, too much brush blending on the 100 pound water, you'll get a little bit of pilling. So, so the Peerless watercolor has the ink on paper, and we just pick up the color with a wet brush. Correct, yep. So, and if you want it lighter, you can always pick up the color, pick up the color, put it on a block, squeeze some water on it, and then you're going to lighten it. Um, and it'll come off much lighter. Where directly from the sheet, it's going to come off deeper. See that? And on the cold press, you can blend your colors much longer than you can on any other paper because it's going to soak in there on the Royal Ultra White felt. But on the cold press, it's gonna stay and you're gonna be able to maneuver it longer. We're here where it's soaked in already. See, I started, I got my line there. So let's go back to our glitter paper. And that is not drying yet, so I'm going to just pull out my heat tool. I did soak it. So this is the glitter paper. Oops. I did soak that one a lot. So it will dry on its own, but we're just going to zap it just to dry it. Now remember, this is our 100-pound watercolor. I did put quite a bit of water on it. Um, it's a little wrinkly, but it'll dry but you don't want to brush blend too heavy on there because it will start to pill. We're going to play with all three of these in the um, Rubbernecker Silhouette and Background class. And you'll get some extras so you can play. Um, we're going to be putting inks on the glass mat. Oh, and speaking of that, let's go to our liquid pure, pure list. Um, which I don't carry yet because I just got some just to play with. So yeah, let's go to our liquid peerless really quick. Um, 
and this is a piece of our smooth watercolor. But I did this this afternoon now. I don't know if I can get it to turn out right now, but we'll try. So anyways, these do settle to the bottom, making a little space. I do like my glass mat now that I pulled it out and I'm using it. So these have little droppers. I don't know how you're supposed to use them, but I just did this this afternoon and it seemed kind of fun and it worked. So we'll see if I can get it to work now. <laughs> Somebody may say, that's not what you're supposed to do with those, but oh well. It is now. It is now, yeah. I did have a, um, a paintbrush up here. I don't know where my paintbrush went. So hang on, I'm just shaking this one. So this is like a darker blue. I probably made my area too big. And I did have a bigger paintbrush out here this afternoon, but who knows where it is now. Oh, there it is. Probably at my house. No, nope, it's right here. <laughs> okay. It's right here. So I did just take and do, and then I took my, now please work, please work. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I missed a few areas, but um, this is glittery, so you can't see it. And I think we could probably spritz this with water. Um, but here's one that I did this afternoon. Same colors. I must have had more of the light than I do the dark. And... Um, Melinda says you, you can, can use them for smooshing like this or painting just like when you dropped the color on the acrylic block. Oh. Thank you, Linda. Linda says that is so cool. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, let's pick up some more color because we don't want to leave any of that color goodness there. So, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I pulled out some smaller paintbrushes just so I could paint with it if I needed to. <clears throat> so you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but there is like tons of like glitter on there. So these will just be kind of cool background sheets that I could use with snowflakes or whatever. So I'm going to set those aside and we'll use those a different day. You can see that the, um, oh yeah, that's pretty. Kind of a very cool background if you like the mixed media type stuff um, and getting your fingers dirty. But what do I say? You're not having fun unless your fingers are dirty. Mm -hmm. So let's go to my one that I totally finished and we'll make a card. Oh, and then we'll get going. Because you know what it is tonight? It's Packer Night. It's preseason, but it is Packer night, so I ordered a pizza for on the way home. And I'm gonna get home for the Packer game. So anyways, this one is the one that I Yeah, you can spritz the dots. And then they'll run together. Oh, yeah, well, I did do that. Spritz the dots on the glass with yep. water. Yep. Okay. I did that earlier. It didn't work as well with the metallic colors, actually, because uh, there are some metallic colors. So I need to play with this more. Maybe watch a few Go videos. Bears. <laughs> Thanks, Go Bears. Thanks, Bears. Who said that? <laughs> Who said Go Bears? <laughs> um, wait a minute. I've got something up on my computer. Hold on. You, Melinda that Morning Melinda? said that too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Linda. They're not playing the Bears. I think they're, aren't they? Are they? I don't know. Oh, I thought they were playing um, Kansas City. But maybe, maybe they are playing the Bears. I don't know. Now you're beginning to sound like me. <laughs> so this is a piece of our silver. Miri lava and then a piece of the 
blue Miri card. And then our Kansas City. They play Kansas City yeah. tonight. Yeah. And then our watercolored crystal diamond print. Oh, I hate it when I pull too hard. <laughs> Steelers. <laughs> That's on our virtual page. That's Terry Conte. <laughs> Steelers Nation in the house. Yeah. yeah. So the blue mirror card does match our blue, um, the blue glitter pretty well. And let's see. I have my Let It Snow. I did have all kinds of stuff because I wasn't sure what direction I was going to go um, here. But. I didn't get to everything, so maybe I'll have to do a Peerless 2.0 and do my um, do the safari scene because that's really fun to do with the showing the. I've done it with the alcohol inks where I do the sunset safari scene. So, but it is fun to do with the Peerless too. <laughs> Tampa Bay Bucks, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting everybody. Yeah. Oh, well, good. We got a good cross section. Yeah. Usually, I would use. Oh, I'm gonna. I was gonna say usually I would use my micro dot adhesive for this. I'm gonna pull it out. So for my let it snow. Although this sheet has been used a ton. So let's see if we can get some. And then I do have some snowflakes too that I cut out. The let it snow and the snowflakes are from Impression Obsession. Although I do have to poke them a little. So yeah, the if you're a non watercolorer and you want to just make watercolor backgrounds, the Peerless is so easy. But you can also use it like I had this piece and to color in. So you can take a little brush and you can use it to color and shade. I embossed that in black. I'm not going to get to that tonight because i got to get home for the Packer game, you know. Um, but <laughs> Go Browns! <laughs> browns! <laughs> Cleveland? Is that Cleveland or is it? Yep, that's Cleveland. Yeah. I don't even know who they have for a quarterback this year. Um, but anyways, so yes, coloring in is super easy with the Peerless because you can get some good shading. So yeah, if you're a non-watercolorer, it's a really good way to start. They're very compact. Um, you can take them to go. Gonna get a couple more snowflakes on here. Then we're gonna Kathy Dunn Browns. No fans like the Packer fans, though. You're right, Emily. <laughs> Whatever that means. Quite like the Packers fans. Oh. So, there. We have our card for the evening. We played with our um, Peerless watercolors on our three different watercolor papers and our crystal diamond print. So... 
thanks for joining me tonight. Um, go Pack Go. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.